Hey everyone,、um, my name is Takahiro Nishimichi. I'm from Kabri IPMU, the University of Tokyo. And first of all, I, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this wonderful workshop and、uh, giving me an opportunity to、uh, present my work. And、uh, the topic is a little bit diff different. I focus here on the transition regime from perturbative to non perturbative、uh, scale. And、uh, I discuss how we can model precisely the evolution of、uh, large scale structure in such a regime、uh, based on、uh, analytical calculations or numerical simulations. And this、uh, work is、uh, in collaboration with Francis Bernardo and、uh, Atsushi Taria, and、uh, also based on these two papers. Okay, so what I want to do,、uh, I want to Uh, predict、uh, the large scale structure observables very、uh, accurately and quickly. This is because,、um, it, uh, needless to say,、uh, big survey programs are ongoing and planned, and the statistical error level、uh, will get、uh, mo more and more、uh, higher. So、uh, we need a, a very good model to, to、uh, face with such、uh, future big data. And also,、uh, typically, one has model parameters, and、uh, one has to, for instance, run MCMC chain to explore your parameter space and、uh, decide which parameter set、uh, the best describe the、uh, observed universe. So, for that,、uh, we need to predict things very、uh, quickly. So,、uh, to do that,、uh, perturbation theory is.、Uh, Good approach. It is uh, almost uh, first principle calculation and uh, it's uh, quicker than simulations. But uh, uh, I, I, you will soon know、uh, why I put here a question mark, why、uh, a large scale the accuracy might not be so good. But uh, uh, also, for, as for the speed, it can be.、Um, Demanding if you can compute up to higher and higher order because you have to perform a high dimensional、uh, integration. And if you are a simulator, you run many, many simulations. And if you are clever enough and careful enough, you can achieve、uh, very good accuracy. But、uh, you need, so maybe Cora or new techniques will help you a lot to do this, but、uh, to Make us a theoret theoretical template over、uh, high dimensional parameter space,、uh, it's not trivial how we can do sim such simulations. Maybe、um, emulator is a way to go. And、uh, currently, I think、uh, one of the a p p r o a c h which is、uh, adapted in real、uh, data analysis is kind of a halo fit model or something. And,、uh, We、uh, recalibrated、uh, the parameters to give、uh, better accuracy than the original Halo Fit. But、uh, honestly, the, this、uh, new, new version of Halo Fit model still、uh, are not so accurate. Accuracy is、uh, typically 5%. So we want to do better. So at the end of this talk, I, I would like to present our new、uh, way to predict、uh, nonlinear evolution. So stay tuned. So, okay, what is the situation? So, I、uh, took uh, this uh, nice plot from uh, uh, Diego's paper. And uh, so, so, this is a nonlinear power spectrum、uh, normalized by some smooth component as a function of wave number k. And that lets you around 0.4. And、uh, this is your, the linear theory prediction. When, if you run simulations, what you get is these. Red data points with error bars as shown by the shadow. So you have to, you want to fill the gap between this and that. So what's next? So naively, you can go to the next order, which is one loop calculation. What you have is this. So you are going to、uh, write the right direction, at least. Then、uh, next to next to reading order,、uh, to loop order, Is this、uh, dot dashed line? You are getting even closer. Very good. 
So what's next? The three-loop level. Unfortunately, and uh, um, <laughs> one quite uh, surprisingly, three-loop order calculation gives you these diamonds, which is worse than linear theory. But, so, but why are you surprised? This is perturbation theory. It's asymptotic. Uh, it's asymptotic expansion. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway, I, I will answer. What I will uh, more detailedly um, examine why this um, breakdown happens and how I, we can remedy that. Okay. Then, okay. So, uh, perturbation theory works only when um, your uh, basic variable is much smaller than the unity. And uh, we know that at present, at no, uh, small scale, uh, density contrast can be much larger than unity. And also, the basic equations uh, for the um, time evolution, uh, we assume single stream perfect fluid. But uh, we know after shell crossing, this approximation uh, is violated. So maybe uh, EFT of large scale structure is one way to go. But, uh, um, one of uh, the um, important remark is that the um, nonlinear structure formation happens in a way that uh, mixes different scales, right? So once this very small scale um, modes enter a non perturbative region, maybe a mode coupling brings this bad behavior to the uh, small small k or large scale. But uh, it is totally un unclear, non-trivial, how this kind of breakdown happens. So I, I will uh, run simulations to study what's really going on. So the nature is not, not like this, but like that, mode, mode coupling. That is the key. OK, so let me uh, uh, sh uh, consider the system as follows. So, you, so, so this is uh, within the lambda system, but uh, you can think of any model. So, but you put, you, your input is some cosmological parameters or model, model parameters and time. And if you give these numbers to this black box, it gives you nonlinear power spectrum. Then, at, uh, it is well known that uh, within the lambda CDM framework, uh, this is a, a very good ap approximation. Namely, so the nonlinear power spectrum is a functional of linear power spectrum. So once you have your linear power spectrum, you can forget about your parameters. This is uh, at least a very good ap approximation. OK. so. To move from here to he here, you have uh, every uh, you have very good tools like CAMB or uh, class or whatever. So um, the, I want I'd like to um, reformulate the <laughs> uh, system as follows. So input is linear power spectrum, output is nonlinear power spectrum. Then I would like to study the response. So when I add some perturbation to the input power spectrum, I study what happens in your output nonlinear power spectrum. So I define response function. Maybe there are many different type, types of uh, response function uh, in this large scale st structure community. Maybe uh, Fabian has his different version of response function. But our response function is this. It is a functional derivative of nonlinear power spectrum with respect to the linear power spectrum. OK. So this is the same thing. I, I want to study this wave number, wave mode. 
which is typically in BAO scale or <coughs> whatever, then I ask myself, so OK, let's go back to the initial condition or linear power spectrum space. And I, I ask, what is the impact of uh, initial density, uh, initial fluctuations at uh, various wave number, q1, q2, q3, to this uh, one specific wave number, k? OK, so to do this, very simple. I run a series of simulations with a slightly modified initial conditions. Now this is linear power spectrum. I put a modulation to the linear power spectrum at some wave number bin. Then I perform a simulation. And I ask how this perturbation propagates over different scale. Then I continue running simulations, repeat simulations with uh, different uh, with perturbations at different positions. To finally obtain, so I, I invert the matrix. Now I uh, have a wave number Q, which characterizes the linear power spectrum on the right uh, x-axis. And y-axis is the response. OK, at uh, low, uh, low high red shifts, with, uh, so red shift 7, the function is very peaky at around k, I mean k equal q. k equal q means no mode transfer happens. The initial perturbation stays at the same scale. But uh, as time goes on, this function gets uh, more and more uh, wider and wider, meaning that uh, mode transfer gets more significant. An important thing is that uh, a given wave, final wave mode k around point 0.1, the dominant contribution is uh, mode, cap, mode transfer from larger scale to smaller scale. So now this is a logarithmic axis. Left part and the right part are very different. And the small scale to large scale uh, mode transfer is subdominant. OK, then now I can compare with perturbation theory, and I can discuss what, what was wrong. So this uh, here, I take some normalization after take out the uninteresting linear part. And I plot the results at different red shifts. And with this um, normalization, the time evolution is, uh, disappears at one loop order. So left this part uh, at different red shifts, the results are the same. Important point is here. Uh, data points are from simulations, and lines are from two-loop perturbation theory, standard. Then, for instance, at red shift z uh, equals zero, you get this red curve from uh, two-loop two calculation, and he here is zero. So significant mode of transfer from small scale to large scale. However, if you look at the uh, simulation data, red data points, they are very close to zero. So if we conduct simulations, we can see that mode transfer from small scale to large scale is somehow suppressed as time goes on. And on the other hand, perturbation theory, theory gives the opposite trend. The mode transfer gets more and more significant at later time. So here is a, a striking difference between the fully nonlinear treatment and per perturbative calculation. <laughs> then what's next? So uh, to understand this more uh, precisely, we conduct a larger set of simulations, which is 1,400 uh, body uh, simulations, uh, with a finer binning to study this function uh, very well. And I do not go into very detail, but uh, I also compare not only standard perturbation theory, but also some of the recent uh, renormalized uh, calculation based on uh, multi-point propagator expansion, which is reg PT. OK, uh, so these are at the different red shift, red shift 3 to 0.35. At high red shift, everything is, looks consistent. But uh, there appear some very different feature at low red shift. So I will explain in more detail in the, uh, 
in the next few slides. First, let's focus on the regime where Q is much smaller than K. I mean, the modes transfer from very large scale, large scale limit, to the BAO scale. And um, it is ex fully expected that from the extended Galilean invariance, the uh, mode transfer from uh, uh, low Q limit should, uh, be, should approach to zero, right? And if you look at the curves, for instance, uh, this uh, black line, standard PT, it always respects the asymptote. I mean, it approaches to zero at the left limit. However, you, if, if you apply some renormalization technique, the blue curve, uh, this part is very different from simulation. So in this res respect, uh, at least this kind of renormalization technique doesn't work at in this region. Next, I show the response function around Q, Q equal K, nearby wave modes. Then at low redshift, standard perturbation theory calculation behaves very weirdly. It has zero crossing or a, a huge amplitude around here or and so on. And if you look at the um, blue curve, it stays to behave very nicely all the way down to this level. So this means that uh, this particular type of renormalization technique helps you to count, to, to calculate the mode transfer around, uh, uh, between similar scales. So as long as the mode transfer is uh, not so large, this kind of technique helps you to have a better prediction. Finally, I go to the other limit. Q is much larger than K. Small scale perturbation to the uh, large scale perturbation, model coupling. Then uh, uh, any lines except this phenomenological red curve, which I will explain next, in the next slide, uh, renormalized or standard, you cannot explain the sim simulation data. Here, anyway, perturbative expansion breaks down. So you need some phenomenology, whatever. So I, we come up to a very simple um, ansatz based on standard perturbation theory. Here, our model prescription is such that uh, we have a standard perturbation theory kernel, uh, three level, one loop, and two loop. But we also have some counter terms and the damping function to regularize, phenomenologically regularize the small scale to mo large scale mode transfer. Then now I show the curve in a different way. Now this is wave number k, not q. And uh, depending on the redshift, we can go up to this arrow position to give a successful pre prediction of the response function. So far, maybe the um, talk is a little bit uh, technical or uh, maybe theoretical. And I, I would like to discuss uh, a little bit more practical aspect. OK, so perturbation theory works when something is small. But uh, the problem was density contrast is no longer small. So what is small? What is small? Given a series of uh, big experiments, the allowed cosmological parameter space is small, right? So your pa linear power spectrum or nonlinear power spectrum can be, can change, cannot change a lot to, to fit to the existing observed data. So I rewrite the definition of the response function this way. So this is just a little, uh, <coughs> the definition. So now P1 or P2, P0 denotes parameters, cosmological parameters or model parameters. Then uh, I ask, so given a nonlinear power spectrum for model P0, what is the nonlinear power spectrum for a slightly different model P1? Now the response function tells you what, uh, what is the correction to the nonlinear power spectrum given a small, slightly different uh, linear power spectrum. To do this, uh, I prepare a database for the nonlinear power spectrum. 
uh, based on the Planck cosmology I, uh, at various different red suits with converged error. Then starting from this template uh, nonlinear power spectrum, I'd like to make a prediction of nonlinear power spectrum for a slightly different cosmological parameter set. Here is the result. Left panel shows the what we call re reconstruction from Planck cosmology to WMAP5 cosmology. Right pa panel shows that from the same Planck cosmology to the WMAP3 cosmology. Omega matter is a little bit different. Then our starting point, uh, the uh, blue triangles, fiducial Planck cosmology simulation results. Starting from this cosmology, I want to make a prediction for the target cosmology, which in this case is WMAP5 cosmology, red circles. And uh, for, for the reference, um, I sh also show the two linear power spectrum, which are uh, these two curves in the, correct, in the corresponding uh, color. So uh, the reconstruction results are shown by the solid continuous curve which works quite well. I sh here show the ratio of the model to the direct simulation result. And uh, the ratio stays to be very close to unity up to very large wave number. Uh, for reference, I also show the re regularized perturbation theory prediction at two loop order, uh, which starts to deviate from much smaller k. So uh, we gain uh, about factor two in k with our technique for the nearby cosmologies. However, um, maybe we, one also wants to make a prediction for quite a different cosmology. In case of, for instance, a uh, weak ranging survey, one tif typically has a banana shaped con constraint over omega matter sigma f space brain. Then maybe you need to make a prediction for a distant cosmology. For that, we developed a technique uh, just uh, repeating the same technique multiple times, which is just we call multi-step reconstruction. Now uh, we have a cosmological, uh, we have a series of simulations for this cosmology, Planck cosmology, and we want to make a prediction for this target cosmology, and we use this technique multiple times to eventually reach to the target cosmology. For this purpose, we pre-compute the response function based on our prescription over this plane, which is a um, varying omega matter plane at various latitudes. And uh, this is because omega matter is one of the most least constrained parameter, and also it affects a lot to the shape of the power spectrum. So we can uh, make an immediate prediction of the response function over this plane. Using that, uh, we gradually shift the cosmological parameter from here to there. Let's see the result. OK, so now I want to make a prediction for an extremely small omega matter case, 1.15. And with a single step uh, reconstruction, the ratio is very noisy. However, uh, once we increase, we put, put intermediate steps, I can have a more controlled prediction. With two or three steps, the results are kind of convergent. So we can make a prediction for this very distant cosmos. OK, so this package is uh, publicly available. You can Google it. And uh, we call it Respresso, resp response-based something. I forgot the name. <laughs> it's a quick. And uh, so the response function, as well as the nonlinear power spectrum template for the Planck cosmology, is all already set to this machine. What you need is just to bring your own linear power spectrum in a capsule to put here, push the button. It gives you the nonlinear power spectrum of your, of your model. And if you know Python or a notebook, uh, it's very easy to use. Just import our uh, module and uh, define your object. And uh, all you need is to give it your linear power spectrum here. Then it can compute the path to the for the reconstruction. Finally, it gives you the nonlinear power spectrum. 
Okay, to sum up, uh, we uh, generalize the discussion from one dimensional thing, P of K, to two dimensional thing, K of K and Q, to gain more insight, physical insight, what's go going on on the transition scale. Then uh, we developed a phenomenological model to make a prediction of this quantity. Using that, uh, packages available to compute a nonlinear power spectrum, given linear power spectrum. Although this is developed within the lambda CDM framework, I believe it is works for at least dark energy models with different equation state parameters, as long as gravity is the same. And also maybe uh, some of the modified gravity model, the, uh, maybe if you give it a linear prediction, it can give you a correct nonlinear power spectrum. But it uh, <coughs> clearly the response function describes your gravity. So if you make a very different gravity theory, our prescription for the K function might be wrong. So this is still to, to be tested. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Sorry, maybe you have already mentioned this, maybe I missed it. So uh, you, you, uh, you, can you es estimate the, er the theoretical errors or errors that you are making out of this, like, you know, when you are giving the... the, the okay, the so we, uh, we have a pre pre prescription to give a rough estimate of your error, uh, or maybe wave, wave number, uh, uh, until which the... Pre uh, prediction accuracy is one percent. So the code tells you up to which wave number you can have a one percent. So, so how do you do that? Just very quickly, if you maybe okay, okay. So the phenomenological part is a dumping function to regularize the small scale to large scale uh, mode transfer, and this function is very simple, exponential or Lorentzian. This variable x tells you how much separation you give uh, by hand. So the uh, prescription to give the, uh, this arrow position is that uh, this quantity x is the order unity. When the separation you give by hand is too much, it, uh, uh, it is a sign that the prescription starts to um, be wrong. So first a comment on this um, sort of using a response as emulator. I mean, it's probably obvious, but um, changing cosmology is not the same as changing the linear power spectrum, right? So you could ha have two cosmological models that have different expansion histories but and different initial power spectra tuned such that the final linear power spectrum, mm -hmm. linearly extrapolated power spectrum mm -hmm. is the same but you will find that the nonlinear power spectrum is not the same in the mm -hmm. two because yeah, yeah, growth agree. structure depends on the entire history of mm -hmm. growth formation. But I mean, uh, you checked obviously that yeah, I in this one case. For some of very uh, simple case. So I take the ratio of the two nonlinear power spectra. One is done for lambda CDM cosmology. The other is for Einstein to Zeta cosmology, starting from the exactly the same linear power spectra. And, uh, the time of evaluation is tuned so that the amplitude is also the same. And this is a typical uh, difference between the two. Right, so three, four percent, okay. Yeah, if you want to go to- I high high care. Care. yeah, sure. Um, and the other thing is, have you ever looked at, I mean, the, your response function, right? There's no reason why it would be a scalar, right? It should really depend on the angle between mm -hmm. K and Q. Mm -hmm. Right, have you ever looked at that? No, I mean, not um, the azotropic case. So this response function is already um, defined after the angular averaging operation. And we haven't checked the uh, more pure mode tra transfer uh, re by um, keeping the angle. We haven't checked it. Can I flip this around? So are you saying on some level that 
if uh, I only care about k up to a certain scale, I can just not simulate scales less than that because they're not really going to have a transfer power to what I'm looking at. Good point. Um, yeah, I don't have any numbers, but uh, yeah, that's um, true. But uh, well, we are discussing 1% accuracy. My, maybe if you truncate your power at some k in your simulation, maybe, I don't know. So we, so we have to be very, very quantitative. So maybe it doesn't work. Is it easy to pinpoint the origin of why you cannot, basically what sets the, the, the maximum k up to which you can get 1% agreement in your reconstruction of the, of the power spectrum? Why can't you s reproduce, why can't you have 1% up to k of 1, for instance? Why? Maybe I don't have a clear answer, but uh, at least when uh, this quantity which I put by hand is plays a too much role, then... So, you, so hmm. it's in your ability to model that yeah, yeah, response function? Yeah, kind of, yes. Okay. No more questions? Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, let's thank all the speakers of the